Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for the Mindful Eye and the photo of the week on the Daily Critique. This week's photo of the week was created by Peter, who's an intermediate photographer from Montana. His backstory, Peter, lets us know this image was shot at an equestrian demonstration. This rider is shooting tracer blanks here. Peter says that he was working with direct, harsh overhead light. I want to talk more about that in a minute. Metadata, Canon 7D, I want to talk about one of the features of this camera body and how it might be helpful in a situation like this. Effective focal length, very long, almost 500 millimeters telephoto. An exposure trio, ISO 200 F4 in one two thousandth of a second. A lot of things that we can potentially be inspired by enjoying Peter's powerful image here. I've consciously chosen another image. So back to back we've had two photos of the week where the images are very compelling and they have been shot in the middle of the day in the harsh light, a quality of light that too many of us as photographers just reject out of hand. So this is another image where I really want to encourage you to think about light in the context of your subject matter. And the next time you go to put your camera away because the light is getting too harsh, really encourage you, if you've not done this before, uh, to take a little bit of a break and then go right back into that hard light. Look for subjects that not only work well in this quality of light, that are working because of the quality of light. And we could make that case here. One of the beautiful things about this top overhead, slightly behind the subject quality of light, so that it is making one of the main subjects, the smoke here, really separate from the background. You have a background that looks like maybe a forested slope where these subjects don't reflect nearly as much light as the smoke. So it's really beautiful how this quality of light is really helping to pop the smoke out as a subject. Another thing I love about the hard light here, and it's one very powerful thing to look for if you want to shoot in hard light. One of the things that hard light can do is drive very graphic shadows. One of the things I love about the overall unity in this image is how the hard light hitting the reins here is driving this very hard and definite shadow and a very powerful area of the image sort of right in the middle where things calm down so your eye is drawn here there's so many dynamic qualities of line that physically happen in the image there's so much implication of motion have a place down in here where things slow down a little bit. It's really beautiful how this harsh shadow not only breaks that up and keeps the motion of the energy moving along in the image, but the shape that is being implied here. If you look at the top part of it, an arrow, bottom part of it, an arrow combined to diamond, this implication of strong triangle or sort of arrow or spearhead is happening in so many places in the image. It's happening in positive space shapes being implied in some of the real strong negative space shapes in the image. You're just seeing the implication of that triangle happening over and over and over again in the image. And this is very, very powerful, that shadow and the shape there. Another thing that I really enjoy about this image, another place where things could maybe flatten out too much and the image could feel unbalanced is up in here, this how to focus background. And I love how these light green areas in this sea of sort of dark blue green not only break that area up, it's really beautiful in this frame how the movement of that color does a beautiful job of repeating like parentheses turned upside down this really powerful rolling line of the smoke and that brings me uh, to something else I mean a lot of times people will hear me critique an image for the first time and say there's just not any way the photographer could think about all those things and it'd be very easy to make an obvious case here and say this is happening way too fast to be conscious of those things this is where I really want to encourage you when you're shooting something like this very dynamic very fast moving it would be great to have a camera like the Canon 7D that can shoot a lot of frames per second this camera will shoot eight frames per second and to really let it rip when I'm shooting things that are dynamic I overshoot I, I shoot as much as I can because I know that I can't keep up with all of these different things in my mind but guess where I can keep up with these things and then sit there and make very contemplative choices after the fact when I'm editing if I give myself a lot of choices and I have a basic to strong understanding of design elements and design principles and I have a strong understanding of my own style, then I'm going to hopefully, by shooting enough, I'm going to uh, have frames that are in three, four, five hundred, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand frames when I have frames where everything does come together like we're seeing here. 
There are other things I'm really enjoying about this particular composition. I love this shape right here, how it pushes back and uh, gives us a little bit on the right hand side of the frame to push back against all of this implied energy. Another thing that I really enjoy is the very dynamic placement of the head of the rider in this frame, leveraged about as far as uh, Peter can place this subject up in the left hand corner. If it goes much further then we're not going to have the negative space and the separation that's really nice right here. So I love how leveraged this is and an image that is this dynamic in terms of implied motion. I just love the idea of leveraging as much as you can the rider here and sort of where we start thinking about all of this action and then where we sort of stop finishing thinking about what's moving the action, the front of the horse. I just love the leveraging of that energy along the diagonal in the frame that is the diagonal that follows the a way of moving through the frame that is natural for most people on the planet. You not only have the obvious implied energy of the shooting bullet and the look here that's happening paralleling the framing device on the x-axis, you also have this real strong implication of movement um, along the top left to right hand diagonal and I just love the uh, the leveraging of those two subjects. Another thing that I want to mention here is the separation of the horse in this space of what looks like the rail on the outside of the course and how high or how low you are could obviously have a big impact on whether you have this nice separation in here or whether these lines start to get on tangent with a part of the horse it might make uh, the uh, tangency of those two things that overlay perspective distortion that always happens when we take pictures that could become a major distraction it could stop the implication of energy and I love how the center of the horse's nose is in the middle of two things that could be confining and can stop the motion and these kinds of things are things that we can control when we're thinking about composition. So another thing that I want to mention in the critique today is that when things are happening this fast, to look for the things that uh, your general position relative to the action is going to have a big effect on. Take care of as many things as you can. One of the things that Peter talks about in his backstory here is trying different shutter speeds relative to freezing the motion of the horse and the rider but then implying the motion of the tracer bullet. So you just control as many different things as you can and then considering how fast the action is happening, once you get those things dialed in, shoot an enormous number of frames. And uh, that's a very potentially powerful takeaway from the video today. When you're shooting things that are fast moving, really ask yourself the question, what are the things that I can deal with and then overshoot or shoot a lot? Uh, in the hopes that after dealing with what you can deal with that in these moments that are happening so fast that you can't consciously control that uh, everything will line up for you like it's lined up here I and mean, there are a lot of different examples of these kinds of separations in a very complicated shot you have it here you have the separation of the two hands hands are so powerful in shots like this you have really nice separation in here um, you also have separation of the smoke. It would be easy to imagine there's some frames where the smoke maybe comes down and obscures the horse's face. And you don't have that here. You have really beautiful negative spaces that are happening in so many different places in this image that are helping things to separate It'd be very powerful. Another thing that's amazing about this frame is just the look on the rider here. Um, there definitely could be in-between expressions where his face relaxes or slacks off a little bit and that would be incongruent with this moment. And it's just really awesome uh, how his expression looks so focused. One of the things Peter didn't talk about was his post-processing. It would be really interesting to hear from him in this thread about how much, if at all, he had to open up the face. You can imagine with this hard light that the face might go into shadow. I can also imagine there might be some really nice reflection back from the bright shirt and the smoke onto the face. But if Peter has opened up the face here, to my eye, he's done a really great job of doing that. And I love being able to see the detail here. To me, it's so critical to this shot to be able to see the eyes and the details of this focus expression really helps uh, to make the shot. A lot of things to enjoy about Peter's image. I want to say a big thank you to him for sharing it with us. I want to say a huge thank you to you for being here. I hope you have a fantastic Memorial Day weekend. I hope to see you again real soon on the Mindful Eye.